Eric was mentioning to me a prayer by Simeon, the new theologian that I shared with him years ago. And I thought I was going to, I was going to start with that as our adoration. And then uh, for, can, I thought we would still go back and do um, some centering prayer. And when we do the centering prayer, maybe we could, um, hello, how are you, Jim? Um, we could, um, we could, we can mute our, our, um, we can mute our, our windows so that we have some, some quiet. Um, and I'll have my, my door is closed and I'll make sure it's closed tighter. And then um, we will do the, we'll do, we'll offer some prayers. And as we do that, um, there, you'll see that there's a little chat box here. Um, and when you do that, um, if you go to your right, you'll see it. And for the, for the intercessions, we will type in things for you to fill out and we will, we'll offer those together. So one question I would have that really uh, surprised me, um, uh, two nights ago, we were interviewing candidates for our owner's advocate for the capital project. And um, one of them, I, we, I decided to start the meeting. I got it right. I said, well, who here has um, knows someone uh, or has a loved one affected by COVID-19? And so there are about six of us in the room and about five names came forward. Uh, one death and, and four people that were suffering. So um, just as I start today, um, who here has uh, been touched by people who um, have uh, COVID-19? So Barbara and Susie and Donna. Barbara, who is? My niece, Jennifer Dolly. She has recovered. Great. And then I'm thankful to say. And then Susie, you had your hand up. Oh, my friend Robin. Robin, your son? My friend. Friend. And then Donna. Um, Mike Davis, who's on your prayer list. Yes. I actually talked to his um, wife, Karen. Oh, you do. I talked to her yesterday. I, I was I should have told Pastor that, but um that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't have much time yesterday. Um, and then Leslie. My friend's daughter. What's her name? Rebecca. Okay, got Rebecca. Yeah? Yes. This is a friend that we have in common? Indeed. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, let's first pray for them, and then we'll move into the, I'll share with you what I have for today. Dear God, we ask that you would uh, be with Jennifer, Robin, Mike, and Rebecca, and we ask that you would bless their bodies and bless their caregivers, keep their caregivers safe, bless all of the ways in which their lives are affected right now, um, watch over them, and help them to recover, keep their spirits high, and surround them with your love these things we ask in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Okay. And so what I want to do um, today is I was going to do a, um, <clears throat> I was going to do a, 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 again, something similar. Um, here it is. And I'll try to only share this and again, prayers of adoration are kind of prayers that we do um, we do we do as a way of kind of moving into a space. And uh, I'll I'll just uh, share this one. Now you just see this one here, right? This dude that you don't see the rest of my screen, <laughs> right? <laughs> which is um, nothing to worry about. I'm just saying it's just 
to keep it. Now, this is something that is St. Simeon, the New Theologian. Uh, Eric likes this prayer. I thought we visit it again. Uh, there are a couple of really amazing things to know about his way of thinking about God, um, which is that um, many times uh, Simeon was, uh, he had a position that everybody could have an ecstatic knowledge of God. Not just, um, not just, uh, not just the, 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 the elite, not just the people who were especially praying, but all of us have a way of actually experiencing God in a powerful way in our lives. And um, he had different techniques of prayer that he believed that we should do. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he was interacting somewhat critically with his context because sometimes people would say, well, the only way that you should pray um, is by, you know, going into uh, contemplation and thinking about the eternal mysteries, the theologium, um, and, and, um, uh, and what, would, what would happen is, is that Simeon had a very different way um, of, of praying. He believed that what was really special about prayer wasn't so much our ability to somehow elevate ourselves or our mind or to say the prayer rightly or to live even a perfect life, but actually um, to go into um, the cell of your heart. And so um, there's a, this is a translation. Um, uh, and, and he has a, um, he has a kind of way, I'm going to see if I can, if I could read this for you. This is uh, from one of his little um, thinkings about prayer, how to, how to teach um, uh, uh, it, 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 how someone should, should pray properly. Um, and let me just pop, I'm just gonna roll down. I'm sorry, I had my place here. Yeah. You want me to read it? I see it. No, no, it's different. Oh. I'm, I'm gonna this is gonna introduce with this prayer. Um any kind of thought, what you should do is um um I'm just gonna give this is how he described it. There are three things you should preserve beyond anything else. Disinterest in everything reasonable or unreasonable or vain. In, the, in, in other words, detachment from everything. Then clear conscience in everything by not causing judgment for anything. And finally, complete peace, having your mind detached uh, from anything earthly. So in other words, what he's saying is you need to kind of move yourself and detach yourself from um, from uh, 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 the things that are, are troubling you, but also the things that are drawing you. Um, and then if it's, any of you have ever done any kind of um, codependent work and, and 12 steps, uh, there's this, uh, this whole concept of detaching with love, which is that you no longer lay a kind of claim and you kind of release that, that thing that grabs you. And then a clear conscience and everything um, that, that, that is, um, basically, uh, you know, walking faithfully as you can. And then finally letting yourself pull yourself away from a concern. And then this is what he says that I find really beautiful. Find a quiet place, sit, uh, in a corner and shut the door and cease your mind from anything ephemeral or vain press. Now this is, this is the posture of prayer. He says, Press your chin on your chest so you can have the attention in yourself with both eyes and mind. Hold your breath slightly to concentrate your mind and then having all your mind there, try to find the place of your heart. In the beginning, what you will discover is darkness, much callousness and evil, but then after having practiced this method of attention a lot, night and day, you will find with great wonder 
and incessant happiness, the mind, though struggle through struggle, will finally reach the place of the heart, where you'll see the things that you have never seen or known. There you'll see heaven which is within you. Inside the heart, you will find yourself enlightened, full of grace and truth. So the reason why I say this is really important is when you see this prayer of adoration, what he's trying to do is not so much to climb up to see things higher than themselves, but he actually believes that God is coming through inside of us and filling us through the mind entering the, the cell of the heart. And keep in mind when a monk says cell, he means not something like a jail, but a private place of his own enclosure. So this is what's all going on behind this prayer of adoration. So let's pray it together. Come true light, come life eternal, come hidden mystery, come treasure without name, come reality beyond all words, come person beyond all understanding, come rejoicing without end, come light that knows nothing, no evening, come unfailing expectation of the saved, come raising of the fallen, come resurrection of the dead, Come all powerful for unceasingly you create, refashion and change all things by your will alone. Come invisible whom none may touch and handle. Come for you continue always unmoved, yet at every instant you are holy in movement. You draw near to us who lie in hell, yet you remain higher than the heavens. Come for your name fills our hearts with longing is ever on our lips, and yet you, and yet who you are and what your nature is, um, we cannot say or know. It's supposed to be is, not us. Come alone to the alone. Come for you are truly the desire that is within me. Come my breath and my life. Come the consolation of my humble soul. Come my joy, my glory, my endless delight. What do you all see in that prayer? Uh, everything around you is not your fault. And yes. Really, and let God come to you truly, clearly. That's beautiful. It's not your fault. Thank you. Interesting. What, what do others think? It's an invitation. That's lovely. It is. It's, all, it's an entirely... As an adoration, it's an, inter, it's, a, it's an invitation for God to be exactly who God already is. Because the light has already been there. The life eternal has already been there. The, the hidden mystery has already been there. But it's, it's, it's a tension and awareness of it inside of yourself. What do others think? Eric, please. Oh, we just have to unmute you. I thought I did. There you go. I took care of it. I'm what getting good at this. What has always struck me about this prayer is that it never uses the word G-O-D. Mm. It never uses the name of Jesus. I thought I read somewhere that this is, in fact, a prayer to the Holy Spirit, but I'm that's way above my pay grade. I know that it is addressed to the one whom we call Father, Son, and Spirit. And the fact that it avoids images and that it avoids names lends enormous power to uh, the, the prayer has enormous power for me. All I see is actions and the actions are all on the part of this one except for the odd phrase like none may touch and handle so that is so interesting you see it because um in eastern orthodox spirituality which i don't know why i know this but i know it because i was hungry for knowledge and i was aware of my own spiritual poverty 
which is why I've never written on this, although I wish I had some days because I realize not everybody sees this. But in Eastern Orthodox theology, um, you cannot know the essence of God. God's essence is completely unknowable. And in God's essence kind of is always away from you, but you can know the what they call the energies of God. And these energies come through us um, and mediate to us the persons of God, which stand between God's uh, unknowable essence and God's revealed persons. And so what, what Simeon is saying is that so remarkable as we know God by God's energies. And, and then he folds within those energies all that has been revealed about this essence of God. So it's a very different way. I mean, when, when, when people who are um, Protestants or even Western Christians in general, we tend to step back and we'll go through like salvation history Oh God, you have always been present and known to us as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You have been acting through history on our behalf, and we call you by all the, our ancestors that you have been with us before. Or you'll speak entirely through um, the lens of what Jesus says in the New Testament. Ask in my name anything, and I will grant it for you. Um, does, does a father, you know, when, it, when his son asks him for a piece of fish, give him a snake? Um, Eastern Orthodox prayer will will talk about these these energies that flow through you, which which happen through the spirit. Um, uh, so that's why they would say it's a prayer to the spirit. Um, I would probably argue that it's a prayer of the spirit or through the spirit. And and then what's interesting is the first few lines you have clearly these things that talk about the essence of God, which are unknowable. And then there's a shift where the salvation history begins to invade the, the, the consciousness, but, it, but in a beautiful way, in my opinion. The person beyond all understanding is a reference to God's essence as mediated through God's persons. Then there's rejoicing without end, which is that's a promise of salvation. And then light that knows no evening, that's, that's the book of Revelation right, when the light is actually going to come from Jerusalem, not from the sun. And then unfailing expectation of the saved. Again, salvation history, raising of the fallen, resurrection of the dead. It's almost like we're moving into Easter, right? And then, um, then it moves back out, the all-powerful who creates. So what's beautiful about that is the classic teaching in Christianity is that the resurrection is the completion of the creation of the world. It's not that God created the world in like that far side cartoon where, you know, God comes out with the world on a cake platter and says, I hope this thing's not half baked. <laughs> and then God has to kind of fix it, you know, a little bit like you would fix, you know, a cake that comes out of the oven a little bit half baked, and then you get it fixed and it's better. Um, what, what, what is being said here is that even, even the fall, and this is to get back at Jim's point, even the fall, even those things that, that we should not have done, God has a way of finding God's way through them and rescuing them and redeeming them and resurrecting them. And so creation, that moment where God creates out of nothing, a world anew, happens again at resurrection. God creates a new, a new heaven and a new earth. And, uh, and that is just as powerful as creation, and it's the creation of the world in, in the fullness of it. Does that make sense? So then there's that moment of, of uh, unceasingly create, refashion and change all things by your will alone, and that whole thing of will is a whole, um, that's a whole nother, um, uh, there's a layer of theology deep beneath that I could go into. Um, and then, then it moves back, having like taken all this salvation history, starts to kind of move back into the contemplation of God. 
come invisible whom none may touch or handle. Uh, come for you are always unmoved. So God is the first mover in theology. Um, yet at every instant, you are holy in movement. God is also the fire that is not consumed um, uh, uh, and, and does not consume the, the bush from Exodus. Um, when Thomas Aquinas was writing on who God was, he believed that the, the primal moment of God wasn't just the moment where God says, I am, but it was when Moses encounters the burning bush, the, bur the fire that burns without being consumed. Because God was, was, um, was pure act. God was completely always act in action. And God's actions are always complete and perfect unto themselves. People like you and me, we're finite beings. We fail. We have a lot of potential that we never realize in our lives, but God is always perfectly acting. And so then moving through that, um, uh, again, moves back down after higher than the heavens, that last moment, we're back up in heaven in a sense, and then comes right back down. For your name fills our hearts with longing and is ever on our lips. Yet who you are and what your nature is, again, the essence of God, we cannot say or know to so come alone. So God is alone, unknowable to the alone, me. Come, come, uh, you, uh, you are the desire. The love is love is God is love as well. That's one thing we do know. And I have desire and love within me. Come my breath in my life, just as God's breath brought all creation into being. Come consolation of my humble soul. Come my joy, my glory, my endless delight. Does this help any, you guys appreciate this? Or is this like, just like wah, wah, wah? Um, yeah, it's fascinating. It's, we, could, we could spend a whole hour on this one prayer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really love what you had to say. And I think that that, it's, that Eastern Orthodox sounds a lot like Eastern in general. That unknowing, the, the embracing of the mystery. It, it, it is. I mean, it's, uh, it's funny you should say that because obviously, you know, um, uh, when, you, when you meet Eastern Orthodox priests, just to, just to prepare you, um, mm -hmm. you know, you won't quite see like the light of Christ shining out of someone. I just go, <laughs> they, tend to be, they tend to be old, grumpy with beards. And um, they, uh, but that's because they, they've been spending a lot of time praying and they're not going to be, they're, they're not going to spend their time you know, trying to charm you because they got better things to do. Um, the the thing about it, 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 when I, I began with that whole idea of like sitting and kind of and finding that little that prayer position where your feet are on the ground and your your back is against the chair. We're always told, oh, that's so Eastern religion. You know, that's kind of Buddhist uh, 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 meditation. But in fact, they were doing that in the in the um, in the tenth century. That was considered the way you prayed. And that was actually how you got the term navel gazing, right? Because if you sit like this, like just like what Simeon's telling you, if you sit with your like this and you drop your head down, where are you looking? <laughs> You're looking at your navel, right? And then think about that. This is the this is what's kind of cool about it. You're looking at your navel. You're looking at, in some ways, the true point of origin for your whole self. You were once fed through your navel. Um, they knew that. And so there's this kind of, you know, this kind of amazing cycle of like returning to your original umbilical cord, which is God. Please, Eric. I'd like to offer something to anybody who wants to work with this prayer for which I've thanked Bill many times. It, um, I like to memorize things. I'm a memorizer. People who teach poetry like to memorize poetry. And even if you don't memorize this, I would suggest that it breaks very, pretty clearly into three parts of seven petitions each. The end of the first group of seven is come rejoicing without end. 
and then I, if I'm using, that's the, uh, mentally, I, I know that I've reached the end of a section. The next section starts with light. Light that knows no evening, expectation, raising, that's three, resurrection, that's four. This next one, I count as one line, creating, refashioning, and changing. <coughs> None make much and handle. And I take the next two-liner as one. Come for you, continue, always unmoved, yet at every instant you're holy in movement. You could break that into two, but I think it makes more sense to keep that. The last group of seven begins with, come, <coughs> name fills our hearts with longing and is ever on our lips. Break, number two, yet who you are and what your nature is. Number three, alone to the alone. Number four, the desire. Number five, my breath and my life. Number six, consolation. And then there you are, number seven again, my joy, my glory. It took me, I would say, three or four months, calmly, every night, to work on it, to add a new clause every time. Many is the night now, because I've reached the age where I can't sleep. And I'll wake up in the dark and go through this very, very slowly. I find it, I don't have any divine experiences. I don't sometimes even think of it as praying, although I should. It has become part of my mental and spiritual furniture. So once again, Bill, thank you. Well, my pleasure. So having, having, you know, I, there are a couple of little typos here that I can, I'll, I'll correct for you guys, but I'll send it out to you. Um, and, um, and then we will, I will um, do that. I'm not sure how, I, I guess, are you guys all, um, who's tracking your, um, your attendance? I think um, uh, I'll see if, what I can do is I can just send it right to you all. It's tracked through Zoom. Okay, great. All right, perfect. Um, I don't know who the phone caller is. Who's, who's on the phone with us? Jim Stokas. Oh, oh, Jim. So yeah, you're both, you're both on the phone, but you're using the video. Got it. Perfect. Well, why don't we take, it's 1233. Why don't we take a few minutes and do again, uh, five minutes of, of, um, of contemplation. I'm sorry, of, um, yeah, of, of, of centering prayer. And we could do that together. Um, and, and if you guys can mute, um, I'll just lead us through it quickly. Bill? Yes. That since we have the screen in front of us, could we try it this way just this one time? To be honest, I find the read aloud directions immensely distracting. We have them in front of us. Could we just this one time for the five minutes read them for ourselves? Perfect. Internalize them. Could we try that? Perfect. All right. So we'll start. We'll let you get yourself into position um, in, um, uh, you got about 20 seconds, and then we'll start.
Okay. That was easier this time for me. I don't know about you. What do you all think? We have a forgiving God. Um, he's forgiven. He's going to forgive us. That's beautiful. And so in Thank a you. sense, but I hear you saying you were imploring a little bit. You were kind of moving into a position of trying to make sense of everything going on. Correct. We've done something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he's a forgiving God. It's just going to take a bit. But it's funny because I'm reading Old Testament right now in the Kings. And how many times God forgave Kings and he didn't like some, we liked the others, but he's forgiving. I mean, he always forgives, it seems, after the we make the mistake. So it's quite beautiful. Thank you. What did others? What did others see? Barbara, you went to your prayer place. I did. I went to my meditation cushion. It's fun. I feel like I'm going through your kitchen now. <laughs> um anybody else want to share? What it was like? I just felt like it was much easier this time. Not sure why, but it was. <clears throat> we'll keep pacing ourselves and then we'll maybe add a minute. A little bit like Eric added a stanza when he was memorizing the, the poem. So the intercessions I pulled today, um, I I pulled it from a, um, a, a another church. Um, the what I'd like to do is invite each of you to kind of pick one of these ones. So we have let's see, one, two, three, four. We have four intercessions. So um, would anybody like to intercede? And what we the thing you have to do. Is so when it, you're reading through it, when you say we pray for, and then it says the church, you could say something like for Christ Church Cranbrook and churches everywhere. And you know, perhaps, Pastor, could you do that? Could you do that first little thing? And then, and then for the world, maybe we could have um, Eric, can you do for the world? Great. Uh, I don't know how to pray, and I get to pray for the world. Thanks. You no, know, and then, uh, well, I've, you 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 often have a, a global consciousness, mm -hmm. and then for the sick, um, why don't we have um, Leslie and Donna offer some names of people that are that are that have been given to us to pray, and um, so what I'll do is I can maybe. Um, uh, what I could do is I'll do the uh, everything except for that we pray for, and then each of you who has been assigned can um, to can carry along that that prayer, and then I'll uh, I'll finish us. Cause that does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, let us pray. We pray for God's grace, Lord. Receive our prayer, our praise, and to hear our prayer. Yeah, our prayer. Lord God, through your grace, we are your people. Through your son, you have redeemed us. In your spirit, you have made us your own. We pray for all peoples throughout this world who today have faith. And we pray for those whose doubt is profound we pray for those who are struggling to believe in the midst of what they see. We pray for those who are gathering virtually because they cannot be with their communities together. 
We pray for all those who are called to guide faith communities, the imams, the rabbis, the sadhus, the priests. We ask that you give them humility in not knowing and trust in what they know. Make our hearts respond to your love. Lord, receive our praise. And hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the world. For the leaders of nations. Especially when we forget that they too are terrified children now. For those who listen to you and who listen to doctors and scientists, and for those who deny such information. For the crowded renters in the Bronx in New York. For the two little boys in Delhi, India, who no longer find garbage that they can pick through and earn 53 cents a day. For businesses in Nigeria, one of these standing for businesses and rag pickers and renters everywhere. You, O oh God, see in an instant and are wholly present to every living being on this planet. All we can do in our feebleness is hold them up to you who already have them and us in your hands. Make our lives bear witness to your glory in the world. Lord, receive our praise. And hear our hear prayer. prayer. Um, you want to start, Donna? Yeah. Um, we, pray for, um, we pray for the sick and those in need, and specifically for Mike Davis, Paul, Trevor, Rebecca, Nancy Norwood, Mark Geyer, Arnold Matthews, and for all the people who are sick, alone, without their families, and maybe dying without having contact with the people who care for them. And Paul, Sarah, Doris, Mike, St. Anne's Mead, the staff and residents, um, and, uh, and Dr. Charlie, Dr. Charlie, who's on the front lines and has been from the beginning of this pandemic um, at Henry Ford Hospital, and for everyone who needs a reminder that Easter is coming, anyone who's hurting in body or spirit in the whole world. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. Lord, receive our praise. And hear our prayer. We give thanks for, and let's all name something we're thankful for today. Claire for Rose for my staff and clergy for the congregation. For the healing of Don Waring. The healing. For all the companies that are stepping up, paying their employees, forgiving debts, making allowances for people that are hitting hard times. And for a new, um, an evolving new relationship with my sister. Hmm. For all those, all those 
in our society, in our society. who are paid the least and are delivering our mail and our packages, mm. driving buses. I have a friend who used to go to Christ Church who is driving an Uber cab in Massachusetts. Mm. Protect the most vulnerable and make us aware of how much we owe to them. Protect those that um, protect those that are still in the front line, in the grocery stores, and everything like that. Um, I just met someone on next door who went to grocery stores for us, and I'm thankful that my family is safe and healthy, even though they're driving me crazy by homeschooling them. <laughs> Yes. The beautiful sun today. For the resurrection that's happening in my garden. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that our tulips are coming out. So mm -hmm. I'm taking them. I'm going outside for outdoor scavenger hunt later with them. Mm. I too, for the beautiful sunshine and for the uh, walk that I'm going to take with my friends at Self Distancing at Cranbrook Gardens in a couple of hours. I'm just thankful to be able to spend some time with them. Mm. Jim, you had a prayer of Thanksgiving? Hold on for a second. I'm going to make sure you're... There you go. Uh, you yeah, I, I have a prayer, praying that that praying for you, Bill and Manisha, that you continue uh, to receive the essence of God, which you know, you're relaying to us now, and I pray that it continues and and you always have it. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. For, for for our new bishop. For the yes. wonderful opportunity to get to know her. Yes. For her, for her leadership, for her heart. I give so much thanks. Make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. And the final concluding prayer is a prayer of Francis of Assisi. I love this one. May the power of your love, O oh Lord, fiery and as sweet as honey, so absorb our hearts as to withdraw them from all that is under heaven. Grant that we may be ready to die for love of your love, as you died for love of our love. Amen. Amen. Francis was uh, motivated a lot by uh, chiv uh, chivalry. Uh, no, one, no one, everybody remembers him like wandering in the woods and, and, and blessing wolves and kissing, you know, whatever, brother, son, sister, moon. But he actually, all of his prayers, uh, he was a courtier and he was a, he was a fighter. And so that still affects his prayer. So if you look at that, to die for the love of your love, as you died for love of our love, that's the bonding of a vassal to a, um, to a Lord, to, to, you know, and when a vassal would, would, would come before a Lord, they would put their hands together and then the Lord would place his hands around the hands of the vassal. Mm -hmm. um, and that was meant to be a binding of love and a surrender and a pledge of obedience. And our, cl our closing prayer, O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help, for you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Okay. What can I do to help this time along? Is this working for you all? Yes. Working for me. Yes. Marvelous. Thank you. Marvelous. Yes, thank you very much. So next week it's going to be uh, Holy Week, and so we won't we'll have we won't have our normal uh, programming, um, but it should be fine otherwise. Um, we'll start after Easter.
Well, to be clear, there will be programming at noon next Wednesday. Right, it's um, going to be... For Holy Thursday, um, we're going to invite you to Holy Week meditations. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and so, so you can continue to meet at this time. It's going to be a different Zoom meeting ID. Um, and just, just make sure you, you check your emails for that information. And for the prayer group, we'll make sure to, for the prayer team, we will make sure that you have that information. Okay. Yes. No, I am, um, uh, I am sorry. I want to make sure that you all, uh, that's going to be wonderful. And I will be there, um, because, uh, this is a wonderful way for us to kind of follow, uh, in a new direction. Sorry, I didn't mean to give uh, misleading information, Pastor. So, all right. Uh, God bless you all. You're going to see something soon. Um, and I will see uh, you all soon. So nice to see all of you. I might go for a walk in Cranbrook Gardens myself. I might see you there. I think it'd be nice. It'd be a nice yes. day. Father Bill, anyway. yes? can, you, can you tell me the name of the uh, Hebrew prayer or Jewish prayer that you began our meeting with last week, the prayer of adoration? Um, it was a, uh, what was the name of it? The Kaddish. A Kaddish. Yeah, Kaddish. But I, a, you're saying, there's a, a million that's... of them, just so you know. And I have oh. in my, you can get, I mean, if you want, I can give you a, um, there's a great, um, you can get them, there's a it's something called a, um, a a siddur, which is a Jewish prayer book, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to look at that at some point. The best one is done by um, by um, Jonathan Sachs. It's the Koran Siddur, and I bought it and um, I found it uh, a picture of it where it was like this big, and it was mm -hmm. just intimidatingly large. But I was really excited, and I got it on Amazon, and they said you know it was only you know, something like $60 for the shoot. So I was so excited because they said, you can get it in paperback for $60. And I thought, so good, so good. And it showed up and it was like literally this big. I could barely read it. It was like something out of like, you know, there's, there's like this weird, you know, when you see it online, you're like the, the motorcycle online and you get it. And it's like this little motorcycle, not that the bigger motorcycle. So I um I might I might buy a, a more a larger version because I'm getting to be of that age where I can't um, where it's hard to read. Uh, thank you so much. I'm I'm walking. The three friends that I'm walking with are Jewish, and I thought I would like to share that prayer with them if yeah if were available. So I'm I will. Not, I, I took that that kaddish came from uh, the Church of England's. Um, book of uh, a daily prayer. Um, so it's not, um, it, I can't attest exactly where it is, but okay. they all should have the Cedar. All right. Thanks guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah.